Hey guys, Dansky here with another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a circular logo design made up of three equal parts. Okay, so I've created my artboard and I'm going to start by selecting the ellipse tool and holding shift to create a perfect circle. And what I'm going to do is copy and paste in place and then holding shift, just use the arrow keys to move this out to the left. It's quite good to sort of move these shapes around with the arrow keys so then rather than dragging them manually and trying to line everything back up you can move a shape out, you can edit it and then move it back in just holding shift and using the arrow keys and you know that it's always going to end up in the exact same place it started in. Okay so I've made a copy of this circle here I'm going to hold alt and shift to create a copy and just drag it to about there to create uh, a second shape and then with those both selected in the Pathfinder palette you can subtract that so you end up with like a crescent shape okay and as I said you can hold shift and just tap that into place and you'll see it lines up exactly with the left edge and I'm just gonna make this red for now next you've got to copy this paste in place and then using the rotate tool rotate it and we're gonna repeat it another two times so you can select this new crescent and the yellow circle and just snap it to the right and to the top. I'm going to make this one green and then copy, paste in place, rotate again and just snap that to the bottom and to the right. And I'm going to make this one blue. And we can get rid of the, or make the, the center circle white, just so we've still got it. Okay, so this is our basic shape. Actually, I'm going to make this one yellow. There we go, primary colors. Okay, so this is going to be our master copy. Now what we want to do is, at the moment, these shapes all come under each other. And we don't want that. We want them as we see them now, as individual shapes. And this blue one is too long. So what we need to do, we'll keep this as our master, we'll just copy, paste in place, and drag that out, holding shift and the arrow keys. And then I'm just going to create two more copies of that. So we'll keep our master one over here. And what we're going to try and do with these three is we want to use these in a minute so we get one that's got the red segment one that's got the yellow segment and one that's got the blue segment all correctly cut and everything and then we'll use those to put the final shape back together okay so we're going to start with the red one so let's move this blue shape underneath okay so that's the shape we want but we also have this tail up here. So let's select that and the yellow one, with the yellow shape on top, and subtract, and it will just clip that top bit for us. If you then click Unite as well, and then you can just go in any anchor points still selected, just trim those, get rid of those, and we can get rid of the white circle and everything else for that matter. And if you want to check if there are any remaining anchor points, you can press Command Y or Control Y. Okay, so we can see we've cut the shape out perfectly, and that is our red segment. Okay, next we're going on to the yellow one. There we go, so we want the yellow one to look like that. So let's subtract the blue shape on top and over the yellow one. So if you select the blue and the yellow shape, go to the Pathfinder palette and click Subtract. Okay, and then Unite. There we go, so that one, pretty straightforward. So now we can select all these other anchor points that are just kind of hanging around. You can see here there's a bit sticking out. We'll just trim that. There we go. And there we have our yellow shape. And if I hold Shift and use the left arrow, you can see it just nudges it back into place perfectly. Okay, so the last one we're going to create now is the blue shape. So for this we want to trim this end part here because that's going to be covered off by this red one. So let's bring our red shape above it. 
select that and the blue shape, subtract, and then unite, and then just trim any other anchor points that are hanging around. There we go, we've got our blue segment. And using shift and the arrow keys, we can tap that one back into place. And this should form our complete shape. Okay, there we go. So as you can see now, the main difference is these still run underneath each other. That was our original one. These have now been trimmed short. And because we've been using the arrow keys, everything more or less lines up. So we can get rid of our original. Okay. Let's just double check, just make sure everything lines up nicely. If you're a perfectionist like me, you can go in and just tweak everything. When you're subtracting and uniting, sometimes you get a few um, kind of odd pixels here and there, and it, things can sometimes move and uh, anchor points can kind of bend a little bit. You get all sorts of little oddities, but I think generally that's pretty accurate. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to give it some color. So. I think I'm going to go with a sort of yellowy gold colour. So I've got my swatches here. I've got this yellow, and I've also got a sort of slightly darker shade of that, and that's going to be used for the shadow. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this top segment. I'm going to click the gradient tab, and I'm just going to drag my yellow onto there. Okay, so it runs from yellow to black. And what I'm going to do just bring the location up there we go so the shadow is right on that edge and then I'm going to drag my darker color and you can do this with any two colors you like or more than two colors okay so I've dragged that color on it's very subtle I don't know if you can see it on my screen but what I'll do is I'll just try and make that a bit darker bit more noticeable. And I'm just going to drag that location up a bit more, probably about 90% I think. And then I'm just going to select the other segments and then the eyedropper tool and just copy that. So it will copy that gradient. But of course the angle's all wrong, we want the shadow to be down here. So we can select that segment and adjust the rotation. Mm, wrong way. Okay, that's a bit more like it. That's getting there. There we go. And that looks about right. And it's remembered the 90% location from before as well. So same again, select the third one. Use the eyedropper tool to sample the gradient, and then you can just switch that round until we get it in the right place. Why is it not letting me adjust my gradient? Ah, there we go. And I think what I might do is just lighten that color a bit. I think it's just gone a bit too dark now. So 
So let's select all of our segments and then just drag that new color on top. And it will apply to all of the instances of that gradient. You've got selected, but it won't uh, adjust your angles or positioning or anything. And there you go. There's the finished logo design with three equal segments. I hope that tutorial was helpful. If it was, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.